Hello and welcome to Only Connect, where I'm feeling quite chuffed with myself because over the weekend, I managed to lay a new carpet in the living room and I think I did a pretty good job. There was a bit of a bump in it. Then I realised I'd forgotten to put the cat out. Playing tonight are, on my right, Simon Keeley, a solicitor who has toured Britain as part of a punk rock band. Danica Neeson, a social worker who dislikes all bridges and most peers. And their captain, Blake Patel, a civil servant with a goldfish named Wagner, not Wagner. United by an obsession with George Orwell, they are the Orwellians. How do you all know each other? Uh, we all used to work for, slash work now, for local authorities. And do you have a lot of free time in the day for quizzing? You know, you do what you can. You do what you can, yeah. Thank you very much for coming. You are facing tonight, on my left, Doriana Shirola, a software tester who shook hands with Prince Charles while they exchanged views on Croatia. Jim Smalley, a product manager who's been interviewed on Chinese television about the state of the world jade market. And their captain, Steve Lilly, a taproom owner who's played ice cricket on a frozen lake in Tallinn. All heroic gin drinkers, they are the junipers. Steve, what's the last book you read? The last book I read? That's a very good question. Uh, the Penguin Classics book. I think they're ready. Let's play the quiz, starting with round one. What's the connection between four apparently random clues? Junipers, you won the toss, so you'll be going first. Please choose an Egyptian hieroglyph. We'll have lion, please. Lion. OK. What is the connection between these clues? Your time starts now. Next, please. Oh, is, the, uh, is this something to do with um, the magician? Uh, next, please. Snake River Canyon. No. Was that right? Next, please. A 90 foot long shark tank. Three seconds. Are these things that David Copperfield has um, appeared in? Very good guess, but no. Or Wellins, do you want to have a go for a bonus point? Yeah. Uh, things that David Blaine has made disappear. That's not right either, although you're all in the same zone. You're thinking about large set pieces of entertainment. You've got to think back in time, back in time. It's Evil Knievel. <laughs> Their jumps that he attempted in the fountain at Caesar's Palace. That's the one that really put him on the map. It was New Year's Eve 1967. He attempted to jump uh, the fountain at Caesar's Palace. He actually failed, broke a few bones, but he became famous. Second one, a crate of rattlesnakes and a mountain lion. I've got some interesting facts about that. He was promoting the event himself. He rented the venue, wrote the press release, set up the show, sold the tickets, and he was the master of ceremonies. So that jump, oh, it did fail. His back tyre hit the crate. The snakes <laughs> escaped. As he tried to jump over it, he knocked over the crate. The snakes slithered out. The crowd ran away terrified. Snake River Canyon, he was trying to do that on a rocket-propelled motorcycle. Unfortunately, the, uh, the parachute deployed early and the jump failed. And that last one, he was scheduled to jump a tank full of live sharks. Uh, but uh, during rehearsal, he, he, he crashed into a cameraman and broke both his arms. And that's what passes entertainment when I was a child. <laughs> Jumps attempted by Evil Knievel. No points there, but what would you like, Orwellians? Let's go for Twisted Flax, please. The Twisted Flax. Yes. OK. What is the connection between these clues? Here's the first. Susan Hill novella. Does Susan Hill do the woman in black? Next, please. Oh, yes, woman in black, woman in yellow, potentially. Gold. Um, uh, yeah, go for it. Yeah, why not? We're going to say women in the colour of the clue question. Coming in after two clues, you get three points. Very well done. Let's have a look at all the clues. What are those things? Uh, so, woman in black. That's a novella by Susan Hill. Uh, women in gold. Yes, that's the Gustav Klimt portrait, and there was actually a film about that as well. Uh, do you know who the woman is? No. No. <laughs> Adele Blockbauer. It's a portrait of her. Woman uh, in red, I don't know either. That's a uh, Gene Wilder comedy. It's Kelly LeBrock as this sort of dream woman oh. in a red dress, and there's a picture of her on the front, I think, with her skirt blowing up. And if it isn't, it sort of metaphorically is, you know what I mean? That kind of <laughs> film. And the Andrew Lloyd Webber musical 
The Woman in White, based on whose book? Oh, Wilkie Collins. Wilkie Collins, absolutely right. Well done, good early buzzing. Back to you, Junipers, for a choice. Uh, two reads. Please. Two reads. OK, what is the connection between these clues? Here's the first. Mary the Mutant. Next page. Is that from The Simpsons? Yeah, it's from The Simpsons, yeah. Um, big Fate. No, it's not Big Fate. Please press the button. Ah, next please. Channel the Blending. Oh, three nipples. Three nipples. Three nipples. Three nipples. Three nipples. Uh, people with three nipples. Is the right answer. Who do you think clue four would have been? Um, Scaramanga. Scaramanga. Scaramanga would have been clue four. And, you know, they have named a gene that they think might be responsible for third nipples, the Scaramanga gene. He's the famous one. Who's Mary the Mutant? No idea. She's in Total Recall. She's a prostitute oh, in, in Total yes, Recall, yes, yes with an extra nipple. Krusty the Clown from mm. The Simpsons, of course, and yeah. Chandler being in Friends. Do you know what Chandler calls his third nipple? Alan. <laughs> no. <laughs> that would be brilliant. So, he calls it his nubbin. Oh. Although Alan would be a lot better. Yeah. So, well done. Two points to you. Or Williams, what would you like? Let's have water, please. Water? Sorry. OK. Thank you. What connects these apparently random clues? Here's the first. Could be anything. Uh, next, please. Pre guest. Does that help at all? No, I'm not sure about that. Next, please. Kenyan Project. That's not the country, is it? No. Um, who's Paul Kenyon? Don't know. Next, next, next. please. Um, I'm not sure. No idea. Um, HP source. That's all I can think of. <laughs> Two seconds. We've got to say HP source. That is not the connection, I'm afraid. <laughs> Junipers, do you want to have a go for a bonus um, point? They're the full versions of foodstuffs. Uh, so House of Parliament is HP sauce, Mars and Murray's M&Ms. I'm guessing pre-guest is PG tips, tips yeah. and KP, KP can you produce KP nuts? And... Yeah. That's absolutely right. You're unlucky over there because it is HP sauce mm. and it's named after the Houses of Parliament. In fact, there's a picture of the Houses of Parliament <laughs> on the bottle. And I think mm. that's because the person that devised HP sauce had heard a rumour that brown sauce was served in Parliament. That's why it was called that. Not pre-guest, pre-jest. So Brooke Bond launched PG uh. Tips as a sort of pre-digestive tea you'd have before meals. Kenyan produce, that's KP Nuts, and Mars and Murray M&Ms. During the Spanish Civil War, soldiers were given chocolate in hard sugar shells, you know, because of the heat, so the chocolate didn't melt. And Forrest Mars thought this would be a great idea for something to bring out in the summer, because chocolate sales went down in the summer because it melted. So he teamed up with uh, Bruce Murray, the son of the president of Hershey's, to develop something that wouldn't melt, and that's how M&M's came to be. So, well done, you get the bonus point. And what question would you like? Uh, Horns Viper. OK, what is the connection between these picture clues? Here's the first. Next, please. And the Emma Bunton baby spice. Paul Hogan. Baby spice. Paul Hogan. It's a crocodile to eat. Crocodile baby spice. Uh, next, please. Judge Judy. Judge Judy, baby spice. Crocodile to Judge Judy, baby spice. Next, please. Two seconds. Uh, Punch and Judy. Punch and Judy is the connection. Wow. You weren't expecting it to be, I, I think. No, no. <laughs> well, now you know that's the answer. Oh, what do you think we're looking at? Yeah. Crocodile, <laughs> uh, baby, Judy and Punch. That's exactly it. Crocodile Dundee, yeah. Baby Very Spice, good. Judge Judy and someone getting a punch. It's the Punch and Judy characters. Well done, well done, the figure that we know as Mr Punch, his first recorded appearance in England was on the 9th of May, 1662, in Covent Garden. Yeah. And who do you think recorded it? Uh, Peeps. Oh, it was oh, Peeps. It's in Peeps's diary. He saw that show. I bet it was laugh a minute. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Yeah, it it seemed like a bit of a shot in the dark from you, but that is the right answer. Orwellians, there is one question remaining. The Eye of Horus. 
It's the music question, saving the best till last. You'll be hearing your clues. What connects them? Here's the first. Grocer Jack, Grocer Jack, get off your back. Go into town, don't let them down. Oh, no, no. Yep. Next. Symphony. Next, please. Bohemian Rhapsody. Oh, Tracks yeah. of Music. Yeah. Types of music. What do you mean precisely? A song title has a kind of music structure in, in its name. That's what it is. The titles include a reference to a form of music. What did we hear? So we know a bit of Sweet Symphony mm -hmm. and Bohemian Rhapsody, mm -hmm. and the other two, I've no idea. The first one, excerpt from a teenage opera, Keith West, otherwise known as Grocer Jack, and the second one, A Lover's Concerto by The Toys, all referencing classical music forms. Well done. That means at the end of round one, the Orwellians have four points, the Junipers have four points. <laughs> On to the sequences round, what comes fourth in a sequence, and Junipers, you'll be going first again, so please choose a hieroglyph. Eye of Horus. The Eye of Horus, OK. You'll be seeing the first in a series of clues. You may see three at the most, because I want to know what comes forth. Your time starts now. The razor. Sorry. Uh, David Lynch. Uh, uh, next, please. Lead or point? That'll put lead in your pencil. We put lead. I suppose I might have given you point if I was feeling kindly. What would have been third? A barrel. Barrel is absolutely correct. What are we describing here? It's parts of a pencil from top to bottom, the eraser for rules, the little metal bit that your eraser sits in. Yes, I suppose uh, it's top to bottom if you're, if you're writing, isn't it? Yeah. Or if you're holding it like that, yeah. bottom to top. Top, top. That is absolutely right. Component parts of a pencil going towards the lead. Orwellians, what would you like? Let's have twisted flax, please. Why wouldn't you? Twisted flax. What will come forth in this sequence? Here's the first. Peters. Don't know. Next, please. I'm not sure. Next, please. Hurst. Say it then. Bobby Moore. Go on, guess. Guess it. Moore. Why would that be? Thinking Bobby Moore. Not it, I'm afraid. <laughs> Junipers, do you know? Uh, Hurst again. The answer is Hurst again, and why? Uh, the order that the goals are scored in the 1966 World Cup final. Oh. That is right, it's World Cup final goals, and that's Martin Peters, Wolfgang Weber, and then Hurst, a slightly controversial goal, and the next goal was Hurst, Hurst, Hurst again. again. Well done, you get the bonus point. What question would you like? Uh, two reads, please. Two reads, OK. What will come forth in this sequence? Here's the first. Next, please. Next, please. That's not the answer, although it often is in this game. Not this time. Orwellians, do you know? We'll try O5U. Is the right answer. And why? Uh, these are vowels with the letters between them in the alphabet. That's exactly right. A to E, E to I, I to O, and the number of consonants you have to miss out to get there, so the next one would be O to U. You're missing out P, Q, R, S, T. So O5U. Well calculated. That's a bonus point for your team. And what would you like for your own question? Go ahead, Sam. Uh, can we have a horn viper, please? Yes, you absolutely can. What will come forth in this sequence? Here's the first. Night blindness. Oh, sure. 
Next, please. Poor complexion? A, a consequence of low vitamin D. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we mean. Yes, I suppose you would have a poor complexion. What did you say earlier? You what did rickets. I say? Rickets. Rickets, I think, yeah. is the more common one. But I suppose if you've got a low deficiency of any vitamin, you'd have a poor complexion. And you know the reason, so I will give it to you. Uh, talk me through the sequence. So, night blindness, light blindness, sorry, lack of vitamin A. Mm -hmm. uh, anemia, low in iron, low in vitamin B. Mm -hmm. Um, what might be at clue three? It's scurvy. Scurvy for low vitamin C, and I want to hear something that you might have with a vitamin D deficiency, and I think the common one, sort of bone weakness, muscle weakness, that kind of mm. thing, rickets. But uh, I'll give it to you for a poor complexion, <laughs> if only to encourage our viewers <laughs> to have more vitamins of every kind. There's very few fans of this show that don't suffer from most of these things, so anything <laughs> I can do to get them eating their fruit and veg is all to the good. Junipers, what would you like? Uh, lion, please. Lion. OK, what would come forth in this picture sequence? Here's the first. Next, please. Salad. Salad. Next, please. A nut and bolt. And why would that be? I have no idea. Not the answer, I'm afraid, so another bonus chance for you, Orwellians. Uh, is it a picture of a monkey? It's a picture of a monkey or several monkeys. And why would that be? Isn't that what Clarkson called the French? Oh, He's eating yeah. surrender monkeys? <laughs> yeah, but it's not Clarkson. Oh, I see why you would guess that. It's groundskeeper <laughs> Willie in The yeah. Simpsons. Okay. It is the phrase cheese-eating surrender monkeys, which is certainly the kind of thing Mr Clarkson might say, but no. Cheese eating surrender monkeys <laughs> was in the Simpsons described the French monkeys is what you'd expect to see. Well done. So you get that bonus and you get the last question of the round, the water question. What would come forth in this sequence? Here's the first. Um, Sounds like seeing a website, isn't it? It's got a hamburger. Yeah. It's on the website. Next. Next. Uh, what is that gonna be? It's rotated, rotated, isn't it? It's, so that's sideways, that's yeah. upside down. So the, it would be a six, maybe the right way up. Should we try? What, V-I? Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, hang on. <laughs> that's, that's, oh, no, because that's in reflection while it's rotated. Right now, it? Two seconds. Is it a V-I? It is not a VI, so I'm going to show the third in a sequence to the junipers for a possible bonus point. No, L you don't know. LI, the right way up. Not it, not it. It is XII. Well, I'm, going to, I'm going to tell you what the answer is, <laughs> and you can just work this out for yourself. Right. Roman numerals on a clock face. The problem is, I don't know my left and right, and I can't tell the time. This is exactly the kind of thing I cannot get my head around. The Roman numeral at each cardinal point of a clock in the orientation it would be on a circular clock. Don't have nightmares. <laughs> I hope that makes sense to somebody. It certainly doesn't to me. And that means at the end of round two, the Orwellians have nine points, the Junipers have eight. <laughs> Time now for the connecting wall, and the Orwellians will be going first, so please choose lion or water. We're going to pass water and go for a lion, please. Passing water means you have two and a half minutes to solve the lion wall, starting now. Um... Oh, this is, um... That's kind of pressure, Barb, here, sorry. OK. Uh, Pascal. Atmospheric. Atmospheric pressure, yeah. 
Anything and else? Tea, could tea be one? So what we're going now. Okay, okay, so so Sue Ellen and Jay are the characters, and Bobby from um, Dallas must be another one. Jenna. Jenna. Digger, maybe. I think. Digger, sorry. Yep. Mm. Rush, that's an American name, isn't it? It could be one. <laughs> Watch must Dallas, I must admit. Gold Gold Digger, Gold Nugget. Yeah. Gold, gold Rush. Bar, Gold Standard, so probably the four of them. Oh, no. and leave Digger out. Yeah, well done. Okay. Yeah. Tor. Any ideas? Tor is someone from... Could be. So Jenna, Sir Alan, yeah. Bobby, Tor. JR's one from... Oh, sorry, JR, Sir Alan, Bobby, Tor. OK. Mm. Um, PSI, T. T? Yeah, JR, Tor. That's JR. Um, oh, JR, sorry. <laughs> um, um, Digger. I can't think what else Digger's going to be. A tour, is that a unit? Oh, okay. yeah. Okay. Three, three lives, lives now. Safety table, safety dance, drawing room, safety yeah. room, tea room. No. no. <laughs> what was it? What was the characters from Dallas? Um, so Sue Ellen, yep. JR, yep. Bobby. Bobby. But then I think one of them is. Try T. Yep. Two, two lives. Two lives. Um, I'd say take out JR because that's the most obvious okay. one. So Sue so Ellen, Bobby, T, Sue and Jenna. Ellen, Jenna. Bobby, T. T. One line. Sue Ellen, Jenna. Time. I'd say take out JR. Ten seconds. Put in Sue Ellen and Digger. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll try it. That's oh. not it. So the wall has frozen, but you found two groups, so that's two points immediately. What are the connections? Rush Standard Nugget Bar. We go with gold before. You can put gold before all of them. And what about the next one? PSI or Psi, Tor and so on? Are they so? units of pressure? They're units of pressure. What's a Tor? No idea. That's right. <laughs> it's a 1 760th of an atmosphere. Great. And you can still get points for the connections in the groups you didn't find, so let's resolve the wall. Digger, <laughs> JR, Suellen, Jenna. Uh, these are characters from Dallas. Those are the Dallas characters. Digger Barnes, <laughs> Cliff's father. That was the old enmity between him and Jock. They're <laughs> the characters from Dallas. And what about the last group? Bobby, Safety, T, Drawing... Pins? They're pins. Oh. A bobby pin, a safety pin, a T pin, has a sort of T bar head and a drawing pin. They are pins. A little too late. <laughs> Not too late because you get a point for that connection and three points for the other connections and two for the groups you found, so that's a total of six. Let's bring in their opponents now, give them the other wall, the water wall, and see how they get on with it. Junipers, you have two and a half minutes to solve the water wall, starting now. I'll take lighthouses, Bishop Rock, Try Edison. Crabs, middle of crab, short crab, spider, spider crab, crab, red rock crab. Okay, there's, there's beers, right? Um, there's a dungeon as crab. Beers from the south, southwest tribute. Doing well. Wow. Edison's a, a, a southwest one. This one's. Pew is definitely. You want to try Bishop Pen now? You want to try. Um, okay. Let's try the. Um, I think Dungeon is going to go with the crabs, because that is a tough yeah. crab. Yeah. Short crab, spider crab. OK. Mm. Red, Red rock. rock. Red rock is definitely a crab. Red rock, fiddler, shore, spider. Try that. Well done. OK. Three so lives it, now. So it's lighthouses, right? Yeah. So... So, what have we got? I'm going to say that one, that one, that one, and probably that one. So what have we got here? Yeah. Yeah. Spider. Old men. Spider-Man, Spider -Man, Ant-Man, Superman, Ant-Man, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that's it. So are we sure? We're sure, yeah. Yep. You've solved the wall. Very well done. Mm -hmm. 
what about the connections? Tribute, Goose Island and so on? They're all beers. You were quick to get the beers, that was your first group. <laughs> Do you get to drink much beer with gin chasers? Too much. Too much? To be fair. Excellent. And the next group, Shaw, Dungeness and so on. They're crabs. They are crabs. Very well done. And the next one, Bishop, Rock and so forth. They are lighthouses. They are lighthouses in Arden American, you didn't know, in Western Scotland. And the last group, Spider, Ant, Super, Aqua. They're all men. They're all men, there you go. You saw that just at the last minute there. Yeah. Spider-Man, Ant-Man, Superman, Aquaman. So that is all the connections as well. And the bonus, it's a total of ten points. Let's have a look at the overall scores. The Orwellians have 15 points, the Junipers have 18. So pretty close going into the Missing Vowels round, where teams can lose points as well as win them, so buzz with care. Fingers on the bells, teams. I can tell you that your first group of clues are all literal translations of the names of martial arts. Junipers. Empty hand. That's karate. Junipers. Gentle way. Judo, correct. Junipers. The way of hand and fist. Not it, I'm afraid you lose point or Wellians, do you know? The way of foot and fist. The way of foot and fist is taekwondo. Next clue. Junipers. Contact, combat. It's Krav Maga. Next category, forts and their locations. Orwellians. Knox and Kentucky. Correct. Orwellians. Lauderdale and Florida. Yes, it is. Orwellians. William and Scotland. That's where I have my honeymoon. Orwellians. Boyard and France. Good fort knowledge. Next category, blue becomes red. Orwellians. Red Peter. Correct. Orwellians. Red suede shoes. The blue suede shoes. Orwellians. Once in a red moon. Correct. No time to tell me that last lovely clue. Roses are red, violets are red. Because <laughs> it's the end of the quiz and looking at the final scores, the Orwellians have 23, the Junipers have 20. So in a turnaround during round four, Orwellians, you are straight through to the next round. Very well done. Junipers, of course, you're not out. You get another chance to go through to the next round. And with those good scores, I think you've got a very strong chance. Thank you for watching. And before we go, a special mention for our catering manager, Big Neris, who spent the last eight hours and 23 minutes sitting in a bath of baked beans. Turns out it's not for charity. The woman needs urgent help. And we need some more beans. Goodbye.